Okay, so my role here, um, my name is Jeff Mix. Um, if I'm your teacher, Mr. Mix, I am an English and ELL teacher. I'm the International Student Coordinator. Um, a little bit about me, I'm, I'm in the English and ELL department. This is my 12th year here, so I've been around a little bit. I live right here on campus um, with my wife and two little girls. I'm dorm faculty up at Robertson Dorm, so if you're in Robertson, you'll see me quite a lot up there. I'm also a journalist before I was a teacher and, a, and an author. Uh, this book came out last summer, and, and this was in Italy where I was launching a book tour over there. Um, language learner. I am a language learner myself, so I've lived in other countries. I've had to learn languages myself, and I know how hard that can be to go through your whole day um, and weeks and months in a second or third language. So I do have empathy for you. It's not easy um, to manage all of this in your second, third, fourth language. So um, I understand where you're coming from there. Um, I teach English 10, sophomore English, and a couple of different ELL classes. Like I said, I'm the student coordinator for international students. I work in admissions as well, um, and I coach a sport that I think is the best sport at HP. It's called Beach Workout, where we go down to Hapuna Beach, beautiful mile stretch of sand, and uh, have a good time training and running and then falling into the waves and splashing in the ocean and having a good time. Um, okay, that is me. I wanted to, to let you know who I am because for all of you international students, I want to get to know all of you this year. Um, and parents as well. I'm, I'm a contact. I'm someone who's a bridge for you. So I want you to feel comfortable with who I am so that I can help you with navigate your, your time at HPA to the best of my ability. So a little bit more about me. I grew up in a small, this little farm town here in eastern Washington state, 300 person farm town. Beautiful, but small. So when I was 18, I decided I'm going to go and live in lots of different places. <laughs> That's not a small farm town. So I lived in Seattle for a while. Um, I lived in, in Florence, Italy for, for a number of years. And that's where I first learned um, Italian and, and still am working on Italian. Parlo italiano un po'. And Guatemala, where I taught at an orphanage here in Rio Dolce, Guatemala. And in Southeast Asia, in Luang Prabang, Laos, where I was doing some writing and research work there. And I love living here. Hawaii is amazing. The Big Island is diverse in so many ways, and I, I hope you fall in love with it as I have. Okay, um, so in my role as international student coordinator, and this is both for parents and for students, basically I'm here. If you don't know who to come to, if you don't know who to ask a question about something, you can ask me, okay? I'm, I'm your guy. I'm tall. I'm easy to find. Just look for that tall guy with the dark hair. Um, and, and I'll help you. I can help you with your classes, class schedule, your sports, your activities, your weekend trips. Um, I can help you with your teacher or your advisor, or counselors, your sports coaches, in the dorms, you're having trouble with your roommate, whatever. Homework, study support, parents, if you have issues that, that you feel are being unresolved, you can also come to me. Um, and I will be in contact with most of you as well as the year goes on. Okay, so one thing I want to make sure we cover today is culture shock, homesickness. I've experienced it living in other countries, and probably most, if not all of you, will experience this coming to a new culture, a new place. Um, so when you begin in a new place, it's all exciting, it's wonderful, you're meeting all these new people, meeting your roommate, you're exploring the island, it's great, right? Um, but then, it, but then it lands. At some point, it's going to land, and it's going to be hard. So what is culture shock? The definition, emotional, physical discomfort that you feel when you move from a familiar situation into an unfamiliar one. It's super stressful. It's really hard, but it's transitional, right? That means it's going to go away. It feels like it's not. In the moment, it feels like, oh, I just want to go home. I miss my food. I miss my friends that feeling will go away. It is 100% transitional, and it's normal. Don't feel like there's something wrong with you or, or you have a problem. You don't. This happens to everybody who goes and lives in another country, another culture. So just know it's normal, and it will pass, I promise. Some things, some symptoms. If you start feeling some of these things, you might be having culture shock. You feel like you want to be more isolated. You want to hang out in your room alone, maybe. Frustrated. You're tired. You're doing all this in a second language or third language. It's really hard. Um, and so you're, t you're, you're mentally fatigued. Uh, you maybe lack motivation. You're irritable, anxious, or just plain sad. Um, you might want to just 
seek people from your own country at first, right? You might want to just hang on, hang out with uh, Spanish speakers who speak Spanish like me. Um, you might want to sleep a lot, feeling left out, and of course, just, just missing home. All completely normal. There's actually four phases that, that we see with this. There's the honeymoon phase, the crisis negotiation phase, the adjustment phase, and then finally the acceptance phase where you're all going to land eventually. Honeymoon phase, number one, you get here, it's beautiful, you're curious, you're fascinated, you love Hawaii. Who doesn't love Hawaii? It's amazing. I love Hawaii. Um, there's beautiful valleys and hikes you're going to go on. You're going to get down to the beach with me, Mr. Mix, and do beach workout, and it's going to be great. <laughs> um, beach and surf. You're going to experience local culture, Hawaiian culture, in, within the school setting, within your classrooms, here at HPA and in the, in the surrounding community. You're going to experience this, and it's great. But eventually, some of this other stuff starts popping up, right, over the next few weeks or months. And, and you start feeling maybe disappointed, maybe a little irritated. There's going to be problems that pop up in your classes, with your roommate maybe, um, with the teacher. So you're going to have to face those problems. And you just wish things could be like they are back home, right? You wish it was the same. Um, but it's not. There's so many differences, right? Language, climate, our educational system. Maybe you're used to a lecture-style system where you're taking notes all the time and taking tests, and, and our system is maybe different, where you're more communicating in class and doing group work and hands-on learning, right? That might be a shock for some of you. Sports could be different than you're used to. F the food, of course. Religions. Making friends is a different style of making friends here when you're surrounded by 21 different countries than, than back home. Um, and, and many, many more things, I'm sure. And then all these little differences start to add up. It starts to feel overwhelming at some point, right? Um, and you feel like it's not going to pass, but then it does. It just starts to pass. The longer you, you hang in there and deal with this stuff and seek out help when you need help, it will pass and you'll turn to the adjustment phase. And that's when it, it just kind of starts seeming silly. Like, yes, it's different. Okay, it's not like home, but these, are, these people are kind of crazy. They're kind of funny. Um, and plus, I just got to survive. I got to go to class. I got to go to sports. I got to do my thing. Like, I got to just get on with it. Let's go. Um, and then you just get used to the strangeness. It is strange, but you're used to the strange at this point. And it feels, the strange feels normal. And then there's just final acceptance. You're like, okay, I can breathe. I've adapted. I understand the dorm rules. I understand the class schedule. I've got a nice group of friends. I'm feeling comfortable. I'm getting involved in the weekends. Um, for some people, this, this happens quickly for some. It might be a few weeks. For some, it might take all semester to get here. And either way, there's nothing wrong with you. This is normal. We expect it, and we're ready to help you through it, okay? How to cope. So some tools to think about when you start feeling these things is one, just be patient. Remember, it's transitory. That means it, it will pass. So just take your time, take a breath, know that these frustrations are hard right now, but it, I promise you, for every one of you in here and watching out there, it will get better. Um, try to find something interesting, maybe someone you haven't spoken to in the dorms yet, something to grab onto, a new weekend activity, go on this hike you were thinking about doing you haven't done yet, whatever it is, find something to grab onto every week and participate. The more you hang out in your rooms, the more you maybe, maybe you like to play video games, that's fine, but if you're just alone in your room playing video games, this is going to take a lot longer right? Then if you get out there, if you get involved, if you try to join a team, if you go on the weekend trips, uh, if you're in the dorms commons and, and, and join in on a card game people are playing, whatever it is, like just get involved. I promise it, it makes a big difference. Um, and then remember your goals. Remember your goals. You're here for a reason, right? So remember what those, those reasons are. You're going to evolve so much in your time here, um, more than you know right now. It's going to be challenging, but it's gonna, some of the skills you're gonna, you're gonna learn here um, are not only gonna carry over to when you go back home or when you go to college, or it's gonna carry on through life. These, this ability to, to adapt to adversity and to deal with people that are difficult. All of these, to take care of yourself, to organize your own time, right? These are life skills. And, and this is a great place to learn those life skills. Um, try to stay organized. That's one, one tip I've noticed in my time here. The students who are really organized plan out their weeks. They use their organizer. They stay on top of their homework schedule. Um, the, more or, 
keep your room organized. The more of that, the, the usually the easier time you have of things. Um, so organization. See the adventure in it. This is one big adventure, and, and it's a beautiful adventure. So just remember that. Just, just lean into the adventure of all of this. Um, don't expect it to be perfect, right? This is, this is a beautiful place. I think it's a wonderful school, but it's not perfect, right? No place is perfect. So you're going to find things that you disagree with or have a hard time with. Don't expect it to be, and you'll be okay, right? Um, many things will be perfect, and, and some things won't. So just watch your expectations there. If you need help, again, that's a big reason why I do what I do is I want to help you. So ask for it, whether it's me or a teacher that you've, that you've gravitated towards or a dorm parent that, that you adore, or maybe just someone on your hall, a friend on your hall or a prefect on your hall. Ask for help if you need help. We all want to help you, um, and we don't ever want to see somebody suffer in silence, right? Never suffer in silence. Say to at least somebody, there's, there's lots of, of support for you, and, and I'll get into those people more as we go along here. Um, and your health. You, you know, you're navigating your life on your own, maybe for the first time for some of you. So go to bed on time, right? When it's lights out in the dorm, don't stay up for two more hours on your phone, right? Go to bed, check yourself, try to get a good seven, eight hours of sleep if you can, at least. Nutrition. When you go to the dining hall, don't just choose the most delicious thing all the time. Put some vegetables, put some fruits, put some color on your plate. Um, exercise. Have, have a school life balance. Uh, we have a lot of layers of support at HPA. Many layers, right? So nobody hopefully can get lost through the cracks. Um, me. You can always come to me, my classroom. I'm always available to you, whether it's in the dorms, you see me walking around campus, or just come to my classroom. I'm usually hanging out there over lunch to help international students. Um, I'm in the ELL classroom, and that's in Castle Lecture Hall. You'll all learn where that is, so don't worry. It's on the far side of campus next to the art building. Um, but that's where you'll find me. We have wonderful counselors, Mr. Furchner, Mrs. Freitas. Um, they're in the counseling center behind the dining hall. You'll hear more uh, specifics from Mr. Furchner later today so he'll he'll get into what they do they even have a meditation room in, in their counseling center anybody's welcome to go anytime just if you need a break from other other teenagers and you just want some quiet time um, they're wonderful mr. Ford who many of you may have met already he's our director of residential life and he wants you to have the best dorm experience you can have while you're here you'll you'll be interacting with with interacting with him the next couple of days quite a lot and Miss Watson, our Director of Student Affairs, who you'll meet a little later on. Um, the ELL teachers, myself, Mrs. Scarth, and Mrs. Piercy, you'll, again, you'll learn who these wonderful ladies are as you go through um, your time here, but they're also really experienced at working with international students. They've also, like me, lived internationally and know what it's like and have a lot of ton of empathy for this experience. So they're, they're open to you. Our nursing staff, if you have any health issues, um, they're always available, you know, kind of 24-7. They're below the dining hall. They'll also come to the dorms every night. So you'll always have a nurse available to you if you need help with anything for, for your health, anything going on. Um, your advisor, you'll all be assigned a specific advisor, a small group of students at your grade level will have that teacher advisor. You'll meet at least once a week, and you'll get to become very close with that teacher as well. They're there for you, your teachers, your dorm faculty, of course. Um, so now let's shift to some basic expectations. You're all coming from different cultures, different rules, different educational systems, um, from very strict to not strict at all right? So I just wanted to go over some of the basic expectations we have while you're a student at HPA. The basics, we really need you to arrive on time to class. Try not to be tardy or, or absent. Um, come prepared. Your teachers will tell you what you need to have. Make sure you have it. If they say bring a notebook and your computer, bring a notebook and your computer, right? Be prepared. Come to class on time. Attend classes. It's not a school where, where it's acceptable for you to skip class because you don't feel like going. You are navigating your own schedule, right? So if you choose to sleep through class, it's kind of like a college, right? In a college, it's a little different, but here someone will come find you and there'll be repercussions for that. So you do need to come to class. It is really important to your time here. Um, we want you to persist to participate in class. Again, it's not so much the lecture style where you're just taking notes the whole time. There's quite a bit of, of small group work, hands-on work. We want you to ask questions. Um, 
it's, it's a very comfortable um, kind of family environment that way in the classroom. Um, don't use a cell phone in class, please. Sometimes the teacher will ask you to for some reason. Otherwise, most teachers just have you put them away and turn them off. Um, so that's an expectation as well. No cheating. No form of plagiarism or cheating is, is ever allowed at HPA. Um, Okay, read your emails. Really important, especially for international students who might want to avoid things like reading in English, <laughs> right? So get those emails, translate them if you need to, but read them because there's so much information. Look at this list, and there's a lot more than this. Class schedule, sports, weekend activities, uh, something from your advisor that needs you to do something, college counseling, testing, so many things. Um, most students cruise through their email a few times a day, and that's what I would suggest. Throughout the day, kind of look, take a peek, get it off your list, make sure you know what's going on because that's when people miss things or they're absent for things or they miss a major event because they just didn't see it posted. So read those emails carefully. That's an expectation. Um, also, you'll, you will learn about your learning management system more and more over the next few days. This is something you'll use a lot. It's our learning management system where you'll have your daily schedule, your calendar, class topics information, where your homework will live, where you can submit a lot of your homework and assignments, where those tests and quizzes and projects and presentations, are, those due dates are going to live. So make sure you take a look at your MyHPA calendar, just like your emails, checking that every day, probably multiple times a day to see what's going on, that you're not going to miss anything. So email and MyHPA, super important, and it will just become a regular part of your daily life here. Okay, um, so we are a very welcoming, loving place. It's not a school that typically has a lot of problems with bullying, um, any, any sort of uh, physical altercations. It's a very nice school that way, and we, we want to keep it that way. So please, our expectations here is we believe in gender equality, LGBTQIA rights and e equality. No bullying, no harassment. Um, very, we're really strict on this. Right? And you'll hear more about that later in the orientation. Um, but please be respectful. Physical contact must be agreed upon by both parties. Um, being on time, uh, again, really important here at HPA. And we, we do have, you know, we have 21 different countries here this year, which is exceptional. Um, I don't think I even had that in my college. So, like, you, it's such a unique, special place to be where you can... In, Invite all of these different people and idea into your lives. I still, it's why I love my job. I get to, I used to travel a lot, and now that I'm here more, I still get to travel by interacting with, with this other language or this other culture. And I learn something every, almost every day uh, from somebody from another country at HPA. Uh, but make sure that you're not pigeonholing or stereotyping anybody. Um, I love this quote by one of my favorite authors and poets, Chimamanda Adichie, and she says, the problem with stereotypes is not that they're untrue, but they're incomplete. They make one story become the only story. So again, look for the whole person. One person is not their country, right? And, and we reiterate that throughout the year. But make sure you're really respecting who you are and respect each other. Again, 21 countries, every single one of you is unique with your own story to tell, your own personal background, um, and we want to learn it. So ask questions, be curious in the dorms with your friends in the classroom, learn about these new people, ask specific questions that will help you help it open up your eyes to a new person or a new, new culture. In summary, um, culture shock happens. It will happen. It could last as long as a, as a semester, um, but it'll pass, right? It will pass. Be motivated in learning these new cultures. Be patient because you know things will improve the longer that you're here. Um, don't be afraid to seek help. We want your questions. Teachers here love questions. Please ask us for any help you need. Um, it's okay to feel like a stranger in a strange land. That's normal, uh, and eventually that will go away. Avoid stereotypes and really try to get to know the real person. 
I showed the video of International Day at the beginning of class. I wanted to share it with, with parents as well. It's usually in February, or early parts of February, and that's because students go home over winter break, and that's a great time if they need to get supplies, um, anything for a class they might teach, anything for something they're going to cook in the kitchen, or for their performance here on stage. International students teach the classes to all of the non-international students that morning. They're also, and the ones who aren't teaching classes are cooking in the kitchen all morning and setting up country booths to serve um, the, the students who are non-international for lunch. It's the best lunch of the year. It's like 16 to 18 different country booths styles of food and it's just ridiculously delicious every time. Um, and then yeah, your performances will be here after lunch in the afternoon. So you could teach a, a dance class, something from your, your home country and have that group come onto stage and dance with you. You could sing, you can read poetry. Um, it's really your choice. We'll work with you on that as the year goes along. Um, important, and we're almost to the end here, for all new international students, that's you. You'll see on your schedule, I need you all tomorrow to come to Castle Lecture Hall at 10.30, okay? You're going to have a swim test at 9.30, and we're getting the international students in the pool first so that you can then come to the 10.30 appointment with me. Really important test. We need to make sure that the English classes that you're in are appropriate for you. They're not too hard, and they're certainly not too easy either, right? We, we really want to make sure you're in the right class for where you are, and, and that's, that's mandatory for international students. So I'll see you tomorrow at Kessel Lecture Hall. Again, it's at the far side of campus uh, next to the art building. See you there at 1030. And that's it, folks. This is me. This is my email. Um, this video will go out to all of you as well, but if you want to snap a picture, feel free to contact me anytime. Students, feel free to come up to me and ask me questions or ask for help anytime, okay? I'm here for you, and I hope you all have a beautiful beautiful year at HPA. I know that you will. Thank you.